Hello. Today, we're getting up close and personal with posture and what your posture says about your health. So I wanna talk about a few things. We're gonna cover what posture conveys, what it is influenced by, what it is proven to do, and what the definition of good posture is. So, without further ado, let's begin with what posture conveys. So, posture is a non-verbal form of communication. And you can see this by observing any person in any setting. Look around the room and see what people are standing like or sitting like. Um, our posture tells us something about your personality trait. It might tell us that you're a confident person. It might tell us that you are shy and a little submissive or subdued. It might tell us that you are a very open person and you don't have anything to hide. It might tell us that you're closed off and you're kind of like, don't talk to me, don't look at me. So your posture says a lot of stuff. And it also, it's a social standing thing. You know, especially back in the day when this first kind of really became a thing that was talked about in the social circle, the aristocrats were, you know, they were very wealthy and powerful people. And the way that they saw the value of posture was in a sense of this shows confidence and it also shows power. Because if we don't have either of those, people are not going to see us as important or as important as we want them to. And so one thing that they, that they discussed with the women is, you know, these ladies that had um, these gorgeous dresses and these fancy, expensive jewelry um, necklaces and earrings and everything, they wanted their posture to be perfect so that it could really display and exude confidence and power. So they would say, their, their, their terming for how to get their posture right is they said, ladies, make sure that you're showing off your necklace. So if I was wearing a really regal necklace, I would never be hunched over like this, you know, so people wouldn't really be able to see what was going on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have my head down because that would, again, that would show that I wasn't confident or that I was insecure in some way or another. Whereas if I'm sitting tall and I'm showing off my necklace, then it shows people, okay, that person is, I can approach them and we're gonna be able to have a conversation. And so it's just something that's interesting to check into. Posture also shows us your emotional state. You can just observe somebody and know how they're feeling possibly by looking alone at their posture. You know, if somebody is really angry, a lot of times they kind of have their chest up and they're leaning in, you know, as they're speaking, or you'll see them with their arms crossed and they'll, you know, they'll have a scowl on their face. But even if you don't see um, facial expressions, but you just see their body language, you can tell when somebody's angry and they're heated and they're, you know, in that stance. Or you can tell when somebody's just really sad and they're kind of, you know, they're, they're really closed in. Everything is kind of drawn in and they're maybe got their head down again. Um, everything is closed off because they're trying to protect themselves because they feel hurt and vulnerable. Um, whereas when we feel confident and strong, we are really open and we don't have, we're not closed off at all. We're, we have a tall chest. We have our shoulders dropped down and back. We are just up and, you know, aware of what is around us and what's happening. So that's just a little bit of what posture conveys to people. So, and again, like we talked about, it's influenced by our mood. So if we're in a really happy mood, we can be more like bubbly and open and out there. If we're in a really sad mood or we're in a, you know, angry mood, any of those things, that's all going to affect what people are viewing and how we are, how our posture then gets influenced. It's also influenced by our surroundings. So let's say you're a student and you've been sitting in class. Over time, as you begin to get more and more bored, you might kind of start slouching a little and leaning, maybe tipping your chair. You know, these are, these are postures that kind of show us I'm losing interest. Um, you know, and again, it's kind of like if you think about like a, like a dog, if you were to snap your fingers, they turn and they perk up. And so when we have our, ourselves up, it's a posture showing that like we're, we're attentive, we're aware, we're, we're really receiving the information that you're sending to us. So just realize there's a lot of things affected. So our overall health, even our, um, any sickness or struggle we have will affect our posture. You know, maybe because we're not feeling well, or maybe because we're feeling super good. And so our posture is showing it. So it tells us a lot when we just observe posture. So what have studies shown 
that poor posture does. I, I did this discussion about a year ago um, at the gym with my class because I really wanted people to realize there are so many negative side effects to poor posture far beyond just looking like you're bored or you don't care or you're not really into what the discussion is about. Posture actually has a lot of, can have a lot of negative effects when we don't have good posture. So number one, it deepens depression. And depression is already big. We don't want to deepen it any further. So get your posture in line. Number two, it actually affects employment. They say that, you know, your first impression is your last impression. And so when you walk into a, an office for your first interview, if you're coming in and again, you got your head down, you're kind of dragging your feet, you got your shoulders slouched, you're not going to look like a confident person that's ready to come in and take on the job and do the best. So, whereas if you come in and you're dressed well and you have this confidence, even if your clothes aren't fantastic, but they're clean and you're clean and your body is showing this example of I'm here and I'm ready, put me to work. They say that that massively affects employment. Number three, having poor posture slows our digestion down a whole bunch because everything's kind of just sitting crushed on top of each other. And when we have slow digestion, then we also have issues with constipation. Um, number four, it increases your overall risk of death. So it's literally a life and death thing, you guys. Get your posture in check. Um, number five, it cuts off circulation, especially certain positions that we sit in. They will cut off circulation, leading to things like varicose veins and other yucky symptoms we don't want to deal with, um, blood clots, all kinds of other things. Um, number six, it influences our hormones. So just having a lack of good posture actually has an effect on you on a hormone level. And lastly, it in increases pain and soreness in the body. And I find it funny because most people, their reason for them saying why they slouch or they stand and they kind of, you know, lean on one leg or one hip or they kind of sway to one side is because they say, oh, it's more comfortable. But in reality, we actually are the most comfortable when we have ourselves with proper posture because everything is aligned. And when things are aligned, you have the spacing between your vertebrae that you need. You also are able to have more oxygen flow in your body and your circulation improves because nothing's being crushed and crammed down. Um, so those are just some of the things that can happen by poor posture. So what can happen when you have good posture? So these are awesome, so check it out. So number one, Good posture keeps everything in alignment from your bones to your joints. It keeps them in good alignment. And we want that because again, it's going to reduce our overall pain. Number two, it decreases the wear and tear on both your joints and your ligaments. Because when we're not sitting or standing properly, all of our joints and ligaments start getting worn in ways that they shouldn't. And it's kind of like this. A good example is, is if you have ever been down to a river and you park your car and you, you look for a path that's the easiest way to get down. Now, typically we're gonna find a path that's a well-beaten path. Multiple people have walked on it. We can see, okay, that's the way we get there. So that path wasn't there until somebody started walking down it. And then another person followed suit and continued. And eventually it wore it all the way down to this nice dirt path. That happens in our body when we continue to have posture that's negative. So if I always sit at a desk and I'm typing and I got my head down and my shoulders forward and I'm doing everything down in this aspect, I'm gonna start wearing paths in my body way that say this is where we're going, this is where we're going. And here's the deal, if we have those paths worn out in our body in areas where our ligaments and joints shouldn't be, we're gonna start having damage and side effects and injuries and then we're we're losing our ability to move and function as we should, both flexibility and balance. Um, so the third thing is good posture facilitates better breathing because it actually helps us to strengthen our lungs. So try for just a second with me. I want you to sit here, sit up really nice and tall, and I want you to take your fullest breath in. So a deep breath in through your nose, so. And then a nice slow exhale out your mouth. So you could fill your lungs filling up and expanding and then going in. Now if I slouch over and I try to take that same deep breath, it's a lot harder and I can't go as far. 
So you'll notice just having that proper alignment with your spine, not crushing everything down, is going to really help your lungs to strengthen and get stronger. Um, number five, it improves your appearance and your confidence. So like I said with that job interview, when you are coming in with good posture, it makes you look like a, like a healthier person. People are drawn to someone that looks strong and confident. And there's a difference between being confident and being arrogant. So let's talk about that for a second. So you all know the person that walks in the room and it's kind of like, <clears throat> I've arrived. <laughs> Notice me. That's different. That's somebody that has an arrogance issue, a pride issue, versus somebody that just walks in and they have a happy countenance and they're standing tall and they're confident and they're just like, hey, I'm here. Like, what are we doing? You know, there's a big difference. And so start watching this. Start looking around in your life at work and in your home and in your surroundings and see what people's posture are telling you about them. Um, another thing that good posture does is it prevents and or slows fatigue. So again, this gets back to what's happening with our joints and ligaments. When we have poor posture, they're having to work a lot harder because they're getting stretched in ways that they ought to not be stretched and pulled. Um, it also increases your concentration to have good posture because it allows more oxygen to come to our brain. And obviously that's where our thoughts are coming from and our concentration comes from. So those are just a few reasons. Oh, the other thing, obviously, it prevents spinal deviations. So there's lots of spinal deviations Everything from kyphosis to lordosis. Um, there's lots of spinal deviations that can happen. So we don't want to have anything wrong. We want to have a nice, neutral, healthy spine. So the last thing I want to talk to you about is what is the definition of good posture? What does it truly look like and what are the pointers to go on? So I'm going to try to make this an actual physical demonstration. I'll go through it slowly so that if you want to try this yourself as we're doing this, then you can see and maybe try this again in front of a mirror so you can check yourself and see where you're at. So when I have clients, I always make them go up to a wall. So one quick assessment for yourself is go up to a wall and you want to see if you were to put your heels on the wall, right up against the wall, your hands right by your sides, and you were to push your back toward your shoulders, your shoulders touched the back, and your head touched, are you able to stand looking forward without having to raise your face up or tilt your head down? So that's one good way to check your posture. In this position with your heels against the wall, your shoulders touching, your head should also touch, but it should not tip your chin up. You should not feel anything behind your low back. There should be a space and there should also be a space right here between, behind your neck and your C-spine. So then turning to the side, Let's do an assessment to the side. So when we're standing to the side, proper posture looks like this. We have hands next to our side. We're standing tall. Our chin, we're going to begin at the top. So our chin is parallel to the floor. We don't want it up again, and we don't want to be looking down. So parallel to the floor is where you're going to start. Then we move down to our shoulders. You do not want your shoulders to be rounded forward. A forward shoulder is a very common spinal deviation that you'll see, and that's where you have the curvature of your upper thoracic or your C-spine is a forward head. So if you have a neck issue, if you're trying to stand tall and your neck naturally is tipping forward, you have a curvature of your C-spine. Same thing, if you have a curvature here and you can feel this whole part of your body touching hard against the wall rather than just your shoulders, you have a thoracic curv curvature. So. We want our shoulders down and back. One way to check your shoulder assessment is to actually turn your palms out, because watch what happens. If I'm standing here normal, my shoulders are straight. If I turn my shoulders out, it will rotate them back to the correct positioning. So standing here, make sure that you're not pulling up your shoulders. You wanna just relax them completely. So relax your shoulders. And then we move down to the stomach. Now, to have good posture, we want as tall of a spine as we can get, but we wanna have our stomach, our muscles actually tightened and so they're, they're holding us nice and, and firm. Now, this isn't like so tight that you can't breathe well, but it's tight in the way that like if I was to walk up to you and I was going to pretend to jab you in the stomach, that you'd, you'd kind of you'd tighten in for a second. So that tightening right there, that's what you kind of want to hold. So you're going to tighten your stomach. And then again, you want to make sure that you're not, you know, sticking your butt out or leaning it forward. Just try to be as tall as you can be. Keep that gut tight. Keep your spine as long as it can be, hands right next to your side, fingers pointing down towards the ground. 
and then you want your feet to be hip distance apart and you also want to see so if I have my feet hip distance apart I know you can't see my feet but that's okay check your own feet so hip distance apart and then look down at your knees your knees should naturally always line up straight with the front of your feet and that might sound weird like why wouldn't they do that if you have spinal deviations you may have your knees that point out or you might have a Q angle your knees point in when you stand here like this at hip distance apart so just check in with that if you find either deviation like let's say you see that your knees point in so if your knees naturally I'm gonna try to back up here if your knees naturally point in I want you to focus on the outer portions of your knees just gently pushing them out so you're leaning into the outer portions of your feet and you're correcting that so stand here try to do this for a few minutes every day to correct and you'll feel your knees then straightening back out over your toes you'll feel that pull a little bit in your outer hips and your outer feet so let's say you have the opposite let's say you kind of have lazy knees that tend to bow out so if you are in that category again you look down at your feet and you want to then focus your knees on the inside so you're you're almost tilting your heels your ankles in a little bit so that now your knees they come into that alignment with your toes and you can look and say okay I'm in alignment here and again practice that practice what it feels like and then the last point that you want to make when you're doing your posture assessment is to feel your feet and so I tell people try to do this with your eyes closed because a lot of times we're just distracted when our eyes are open so close your eyes and I want you to really think can I feel a difference in the weight on my feet or am I balanced do I have both of my feet naturally balanced between or my weight balanced between my feet or am I do I tend to lean because a lot of times you'll notice when, when we're talking with somebody you might kind of tend to lean to one side and most of us have one side that we have kind of gotten this habit in where we lean to the side and this is like our resting foot chances are the side that you lean to the most is the side that your balance is best on and you can test that again by testing your balance you know stand on one foot see how your balance is stand on the other one see which one's stronger chances are the one that's the stronger side of balance is the side that you tend to lean towards so just get yourself in a habit of going when I'm standing whether I'm talking listening watching whatever I'm doing I'm gonna be aware of my posture I'm gonna be checking in with my chin where is it at where are my shoulders at are my hips even um, are my knees even are they pointing straight towards my toes and do I have my weight balanced between my feet so give those a try take your posture seriously it tells us a lot about your health your mood and what you're wanting to tell the world so I hope this was helpful if it was please share it subscribe to my channel if you haven't already if you have any questions go ahead and post them in the comments and I'm also on Instagram and Facebook at Casey Relaine, and I would love to have you check it out on there. Have an awesome day.